This is so everybody can know that we're live. Yeah, it looks good. And then like, I'm gonna even try one of these new screens. Look I can't. That. I can't yeah. even with this new screen thing. I hate it. You love it. Hated it. Mm -mm. Look, mm -hmm. grown narrow. Uh, <laughs> I am not here for any. How do I see two of myself? How do you what? I see two of myself. Whoa. Oh, okay. Right here. There uh, we go. That's because you've been drinking more than we have. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen kid doubles <laughs> of yourself. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, you got off lucky. I didn't set up the sound effects. Thank you, Jesus, for small miracles. I'll just do them like you know, never, never, <laughs> no more. Nope, no more. <laughs> no, God, no more sound effects for the rest of your life. I don't even like this view. Look at that. Like my head is like. Chopped off. This is like such a. <laughs> and this is the break break. What, what? Hey, everybody. So it's the breakdown. <laughs> With episode 39. Special guest. Discussing elements. Cat is your host. <laughs> Am I forgetting anything? No, I don't know. Hi, everybody. What? It's been like forever since I've seen you guys. Welcome to The Breakdown on a special Sunday night. What? Yeah, I thought I was going to say Wednesday, but it's Sunday, guys. And is it? we are, it is Sunday. It's not, don't adjust your cameras. Don't double check your calendars. We're doing a special Sunday interview. Bah, 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 bah. I know you guys missed me so much. It's okay. I missed you guys too. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I am happy to say that I am joined by the owner of E4 Comics and the writer and creator of The Elements Burden of Truth, Jerry Chatlin. What? Welcome to the show, Jerry. I got it wrong. I did not <laughs> get it wrong. <laughs> I got it right. Yes, thank you. It's all right. It's perfect. Perfect. Yes, you see, I've gotten yes, Italian, you know. I've gotten Chetilin and all these other things. It's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I got it right. You see? I, I take care of you. But thank you so much for coming on to the show. Really appreciate it. Um, it, it took a while. <laughs> but I'm just glad we finally were able to to pull through and get you on here. So I'm super, super excited. Uh, thank you so much for making the time to have me on your show. I've been looking forward to it. Yes. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Jerry, and E4 Comics. Uh, born and raised in Brooklyn, currently living in, <laughs> currently living in Long Island. Um, we got pretty much me and three other guys got together to create a comic book. So we decided to create a company for the comic book, which eventually led to uh, the creation of E4 Comics. So this was probably back in 2015. I want to say when we fully established E4 Comics. So, so do you guys only self-publish or do you, does E4 Comics help other um, indie comic book writers and artists publish as well? As of right now, we're just publishing our, ourselves, but we're currently with another group called the SSB. That happens basically a, a bunch of other indie creators that help support support and promote each other work as well. And that's pretty much our distributor when we're going to like stores or anything like that. We use the SSB label because it's a lot easier to um, present multiple books to stores instead of like one, two, three books. So e4 comics is own entity creates only its own books but as distribution is, is ssb the savage oh. sandbox okay that sounds that sounds really cool like i'm i have never been in known the part of the process of the comic books after like once you get it all done and stuff like that so have you learned a lot or did you already know before you started e-comics e4 comics excuse me um what the process was like after you created a comic book i knew absolutely nothing <laughs> absolutely nothing like <laughs> it was just kind of thrown in the air it was like hey you know we should um 
we should definitely take E4 Comics, like, you know, make a name for it, trademark it, you know, do all that for it. But when it came to marketing, all that, it's stuff that I had to learn offhand, you know, just getting into it. Because me personally, I'm actually the shy guy. If you just told me, hey, Jerry, here's your cubicle, go continue writing stories for the elements, we'll handle everything else, that'd be my dream job right there. <laughs> you know, So I had to learn everything about it and everything. And like I said, the group, the SSB group, we have um, a few members in there that are more privy to the marketing and getting these things out there. You know, So for me, it's just kind of like, when we first put it out there, it was like, all right, we're obviously going to have to use Instagram, Facebook, social media to start getting it out there for people to see it, try to build a following and everything. And uh, the guys in the SSB definitely started helping us out with getting our stuff into the stores. Oh, that's good. Okay. And then how, how did the networking start? Because I... No, I was introduced to you through somebody else that I, that I know. <laughs> like that. So how did the, did they help with the marketing, um, with the networking as well? Or was that like all you just following and talking to other creators? Yeah, that was mainly all me because learning Instagram is like another job. Learning Facebook is another job with all the algorithms and when you should post, when you shouldn't post, how to post, what you should like. It's, it's absolutely insane. So my first networking started with a group called Concrete Comics. They're um, a group of black creators that have written um, multiple black comics and everything. So when I first um, started, I reached out to them. And they were nice enough to guide me and sh give me some pointers and show me things to do, things not to do. And actually from them is where I met um, another person named Jason who is the creator and owner of Ferro Studios and a comic book called The Convictor. Mm -hmm. And me and him started talking. And through him, I started meeting other people, Chris and all the other members that eventually came to form the SSB. Um, like the guy you're talking about that we know, that we both know is Dan. Dan the man is what I call yeah. him, creator of the Who Knows Karate. Yeah. Um, I met him on Instagram as well. And I saw that he was doing a campaign and... I still remember the first day that I met him was I saw a live. We just started following each other for whatever reason. I think we had a mutual party that was following both of us. Okay. He went on a live one day and I saw him drawing with his finger and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. What the hell is this? Like, <laughs> yeah. He told me about that and I was like, you do what now? <laughs> <laughs> so that automatically broke the ice and we pretty much been friends ever since. So when he heard about me doing my campaign, he told me about you. He was like, he had the most, like the best time having an interview with you. Aww. So I was like, okay, so Text I definitely want to get bored. <laughs> <laughs> All lies. <laughs> Whatever. Everybody has a great time with me. Well, Jerry's actually hopped into my streams and yep. hopefully you've had a good time from there. Um, I just love how you, you say that you were shy, but the way you hopped into my stream, I would never have guessed that you were shy. Because he was like, I'm here to see who you are and who I'm about to talk to. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm a keyboard tough guy. My face ain't out there. So <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. No, but um, but I'm glad that he was able to to say that he had a good time because these kinds of interviews and stuff like that help promote even after like the campaign is done and things like that how did you feel about starting is this your first kickstarter that you've done second one second one okay and how how is like i always ask how is the kickstarter life for you hate it hate it <laughs> <laughs> and i tell all my friends that too like even my friend that's here with me now like he's like, yo, your Kickstarter's doing good. And I was like, Yeah, I hate it. And he's like, wait, what? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I like I said, like, it's it's a thing that you have to do. Like I said, we want our book to get out there. You gotta put your face out there. You gotta mm -hmm. promote it. Kickstarter is another platform that you help raise money, but at the same time, it works like a uh like an Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. because it also can draw new followers Perfect. to what you're creating. So the first one that I had was last year around February. February seems to be around the time where I drop each book. So I had one last year. It was successful. We pretty much raised um, like double what we were looking to make. Oh, wow. You know, so 
that went well. But, you know, it's like I said, it's stressful. You know, your cost leak on Kickstarter, looking to see if you got a new backer every day to see if you're reaching the stretch goals, mm -hmm. you know. And when you have your first one, you kind of set the tone for it. So you, when you drop the second one, you're kind of like, I want to do better. Yeah. You know, so you try to push yourself to try and do better and everything. But I think when it comes to creating Kickstarters, you should expect a small, a, a difference between the first and the second one. Because the first one I want to say is like people hear, oh, wow, you're creating something. Oh, that's great. I'm going to support you whether they're into comics or not. So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, we're going to support it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then now when the second one comes back around, it's like, oh, it's just like a continuous thing. Like, I'm not really into comics, you know, so yeah. I wanted to help out the first time, but I, I wasn't sure about the second time, you know. So that's kind of like the situation you kind of fall into. Mm -hmm. So that's where creating like a good following on Instagram and, and Facebook comes into play. It should try and create and build on those followers. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the elements burden of truth. So the elements started with us four. So uh, it's about four brothers that grew up in an orphanage. Um, they were already noticed to be different from birth. They were babies that were literally found abandoned in the woods by two sisters. So the sisters picked the babies up and raised them in the orphanage. Um, they noticed that the, these four brothers basically were stronger, faster than normal humans to begin with. So one day they try to leave the orphanage to see what else is out there in the world. By the time they hit 17, um, they end up falling into a situation when it was like they all experienced like a hallucination. Mm -hmm. So within the hallucinations, they all stumble onto four stones. These four stones eventually give them the power of fire, wind, water, and electricity. So when they awaken their orphanage is being attacked by these unknown force that's attacking the orphanage so they manage to defend the, the orphanage and make their way onto the um the next town the town is also being attacked so now they're over there trying to protect the town and they end up getting help from an unknown person within which is from our first book okay and once he helps them out and uh, those people end up leaving, they end up running into him into the woods. And that's pretty much where issue one kind of ends. Okay. So, uh, we currently have two books out. So the first one is called The Awakening. And this is issue two. That's called Burden of Truth. Okay. Okay. So um, if people want to grab the first comic, is that like on your website? It's on the website and it's also on the Kickstarter as well. We have oh. the digital and we have physicals as well. Um, so how did this story come about? Because you are the writer and creator, but not the artist, correct? Not, not the artist. Oh so growing up, I've always had a thing for writing. Um, there's actually a situation that I like to bring up where it was in junior high school. And we were given a project because we were reading. I forgot the name of the book. But it was kind of like growing up in like a hard life, you know, with parents, absent parents, abusive parents, et cetera. And they gave us a chance to write short stories about being in that situation. So you can either write about your real life if you're in a situation like that, mm -hmm. or you can make something up. Okay. So I ended up writing something that, that was apparently too good to not be real. So I remember being pulled out of the classroom by my teacher and my vice principal. And they told me, Jerry, congratulations. You won. Your letter is going to be read on channel 13, et cetera, et cetera. But we want to get you help. Oh and I'm like, I'm sorry. Oh and they're like, yeah, we want to get you help, you know, because of what you're experiencing and dealing with at home. And I'm like, no, this is a story. And they're like, no, there's no way this is just a story. When they you don't. know, you know, and I was just like, no, it's a story. So like they made like a whole big deal about it that my parents have to come to school oh. to get, me, you know, and it was just like, <laughs> I can only imagine my dad's probably just like, don't ever <laughs> write again. Don't write again. <laughs> Yeah, like just just stop writing. Just don't don't write. I mean, granted, like I said, growing up was complicated. Yeah, grew up in a broken home. Parents got divorced. You know, we've been through evictions and 
family to family's house. I got adopted when I was around 12, 13 years old. So me and three of my closest friends, we all had issues at home. Mm-hmm. You know, we all had different separate issues. So I figured, you know what, just to kind of just sum up our whole situation, I want to create a story about us, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, this is around the time when we first started getting into anime. You know, so anime plays a big role within the story. If you look at the artwork, it looks very very Mm anime-ish. So we started getting into anime and I started to say, you know, I would love to combine something elements with like a combination of like Dragon Ball Z and other anime shows that I've been watching. So we figured starting out in an orphanage kind of just sums up our whole childhood growing up. You know, just, yeah. all right, just grow up in an orphanage and then we can just go on it from there, yeah. you know? So I I actually wanted to ask, like, so a good chunk of what happened to all of you in real life makes it into the comic, correct? Yes. Personalities, like each of these characters take on a, one of our personalities. Like the Pyro character takes on my personality. Shock takes on my, my friend Corey's personality. My guy takes on Matthew's personality, my adopted brother, and then Hydro takes on my best friend, Hydro, um, Hassan's personality. So they all have like our personalities in there. So even the comedic value or even the way we treat each other makes it into the comic book. Okay. So you sought out an artist that does more anime style because you grew up loving and liking that kind of art style. Yeah. So, and it's because the whole journey to creating the comic book let me tell you people when they say like don't give up legit don't give up like if it's hard it's hard for a reason mm-hmm. because when you finally create it or you finally have whatever it is you're working on in your hand that feeling is just like no other you know it's just something you you just can't explain because At first, when we started, I started writing the story and basically what we do, we sit down, they tell me what they want to see in the story, what it is that they like about certain animes, what they don't, what they want to see, what they don't want to see. And it's my job to pretty much put that all together in Mm -hmm. a story. So with us basically going through all those steps, we kind of wrote the story out as an anime. If anybody knows anything about animation, it costs a lot of money. Yep. So <laughs> yeah. that was out the window. Yeah. <laughs> so that was out the window. So then everything that I wrote, it was just like, hey, you know what? How about we just turn this into a comic book? So now I had to reformat everything that I wrote for an anime style into a comic mm. book style. Yeah. You know, scripts and everything and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, shit. Like, all right, whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. So the story part is taken care of. I'm writing it. I'm doing all that. So then it became an issue about an artist. We found out that one of our friends, Dennis, who's my concept artist, was an artist. And mm-hmm. he was like, yo, if you want, I can bring your artwork, like, you know, just sketch out your characters for you. Uh-huh. So it was like, great. So we started playing out with the characters, character designs, what we wanted to see. And he was the first to pretty much create all four brothers for us. Oh, Wow. So he eventually introduced me to Facebook groups of mm-hmm. people, other creators, other writers, other artists that are even looking for work. So we ended up finding an artist that was able to take what he drew and give it that anime feel. Um, right. Mind yeah. you, this is the first artist. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have a third book out that came out in 2016. That's called The Elements. It's no longer in print. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. It's no like it came out 2016. It was the very first comic we've ever created. And it was designed to get people's attention because you could pretty much say like it kind of left in the middle mm-hmm. of where the story was. So people would open it, read it, they'd see crazy things happening and wonder what the hell's happening. You know? And mm-hmm. Eventually, when issue one, The Awakening came out, it starts from the beginning. So you can pretty much say all the next issues are going to be doing a full circle back to where issue zero left off. Got it. Okay. So 
that artist bought, helped us bring that book to life. And that was amazing. We sold quite a few. We were like pretty much people selling CDs out of the trunk of their cars. That's exactly <laughs> what we were doing. We were just on the streets, so giving out the cards, selling the books and everything. The one regret that I do have from that is we didn't follow that wave. So after that wave, we kind of fell off from creating books because we were just focusing on things that were happening in real life. Yeah. So fast forward to 20, um, 2019, 2018, I ended up deciding to let's continue creating the comic. Mm -hmm. I had to find a new artist because that artist was no longer available after all these years, obviously. Um. My mistake. <laughs> yeah. So the next artist we found was... A great artist. He's the artist of The Awakening. Okay. He, he's the one that did the artwork for The Awakening. I love his art style. It's amazing. But he was very unreliable. So what would normally take, you know, a few months to do, it took us probably a year and a half. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, to finish this comic. Like, it would be that he shows up. I send him a few pages. He disappeared for months. Then finally reappears, oh. says something happened, and all he had was sketches, and then disappear again. Then it'd be line work. Like, it was bad. I'm telling you, know? you sometimes it's that trial and error stuff, man. Um, it really is. Yes, that, it is. <laughs> that, that goes to the point of the whole don't give up. Like, things are going to happen. Like, mm -hmm. y'all can't give up. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So, exactly. yeah. Exactly. So we went through that headache with him. Finally, when we come, like I, I wasn't able to book any shows, any conventions, anything like that, because we couldn't, I didn't have anything to show, Yeah, you know? So after the book was finally done, I decided, Hey, we're going to have to part ways because I mean, you're going through your own personal things at home. It's not working out for us. I need things done in a timely fashion. I hope things work out. So we end up parting ways. So now for burden of truth, I found a new artist. And she has been phenomenal. Oh, that's she good. She is great. She, like, I <laughs> I hate to say this, but I felt like like a battered spouse <laughs> that finally got the courage to break the relationship. And now I found someone that actually treats me well and treats me the way I'm supposed to be treated. Like, I'm looking at these pages and I'm looking how fast they're coming in. And I'm like, that's good. wow. Yeah, like, I, I can't believe it. Like, I'm like, yo, with this rate, we might be able to put out two, three books within a year. Oh, that's good. You know, so I'm happy we end up getting that going. So we finally created Burden the Truth. Burden the Truth, the images are pretty much already done. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just with uh, my friend Chris, who's doing the lettering for the comic. Oh, okay. You know? So after that, it'll be done and be ready for print and hopefully be getting it out to people as soon as possible. That's dope. And how many ha, have you already written more to the series or are oh, you yeah. going just as it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have the burden of truth, which is out on Kickstarter. Now, after that, we have three next books, which is going to be all part of one saga. And it's going to be called the Dysa saga, part one, two, and three, three books. Oh. So after that, that's when we got to get back to the drawing board and kind of figure out where we're going to go from here. because. After when the Dyson Saga happens, our world, the comic, uh, the, the elements comic world kind of mm -hmm. opens up more because we're not going to just be dealing with Earth. We're going into space. We're dealing with aliens, different races, different oh, abilities. Wow. Like, yeah, so much things are going to be coming into play. So we're going to have to like sit down and kind of figure this thing out. So mm -hmm. one of the things we did with the first Kickstarter, the biggest tier. We, are, we gave people a chance to create a character that would be within the comic book. Oh, wow. I didn't think it would be that popular, so I didn't put a limit on it. But we ended up getting like 22 backers on that. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yeah. So it kind of yeah. became a headache and a blessing at the same time because, yeah. like I said, we got to create new race and aliens, you know, abilities and everything. So, you know, getting other people's input help us create a yeah. lot of different races and everything like that. You but different opinions and different views yeah. on things that you might not have thought of. So that actually is true. Yeah, exactly.
exactly but now it's just kind of like i have to create 22 characters so i'm writing the story now i gotta you know map out the characters where they're gonna fit in and everything so yeah it, it kind of turned out to be a headache but we pretty much figured most of it out so we got it all planned out so i'm happy about that well, I mean, that's good. Like, now you know, too, to put a, a cap yeah, on Yeah, I'm putting a cap. Ever do something like that again, a cap is going on that. Like, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Um, are there any other books that you guys have out, or is this just pretty much what you guys are focusing on right now? This is what we're focusing on. Eventually, I, which I already have written out, we plan on doing the Clinic's book. And the Clinic is basically like the hooded character that you see within the book, like the cover of the awakening. Mm -hmm. like he's eventually going to get his own, own spinoff book, which kind of tells you his story before meeting up with the four brothers. Oh, and so it's kind of like a prequel. Yeah, exactly. So it'll, it kind of explains his story and it helps you understand more about the stones and, and the chosen elemental warriors, what they're, what they're capable of doing or what they're supposed to be doing. Okay. Okay, well, let's give your artist a shout out. What's the artist's name? Her name is Helen. Helen. Helen, what's up? Love your artwork. <laughs> yeah, she's been phenomenal. I, I definitely can't complain or anything. So I try to let her know how special and important she is Aww, every okay. chance that I get. You know, <laughs> it's good to have that support. You know, once the team starts, you know, being in good synergy, it because yes. it uplifts you too you know what i mean like if you have that one person in the group that's just like you said before not reliable it kind of just puts a you know great Big cloud camera. over everything yeah mm -hmm. you don't feel motivated you don't feel creative you know that kind of stuff does hurt but in the long run you ended up finding you know um heather you said heather right yep. heather. Helen. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Oh my God! Did you just mess up that name? <laughs> I did. It's what I do. What, what's the name? Heather. He Helen. 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 Sorry. I <laughs> but I do love her artwork. It's really good. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So, how much longer do you have on the Kickstarter? I have six days left. Um, days I'm back. pretty excited about this kickstarter because we decided to do some new things about it mm -hmm. we decided to do some chibi shirts if you know what chibi are like you know hey. little, little yeah so we decided to create some chibi shirts for for the kickstarter we have one thing it's like called the elemental tier so let's say pyro is your favorite character you pick this tier you pick pyro basically you get everything of pyro from mini posters to the pyro shirt oh. and and in this Kickstarter, I decided I wanted to do something a little different. I decided to do challenge coins for the characters. So I know That's people. Cool. Yeah, because I know a lot of people do like trading cards for their things. I want to do something a little different. So I decided to do coins for each character. That's so cool. you could get, you definitely could choose to get coins from that. You can get the coin collector tier. Um, that basically gives you all four coins. If you end up getting the top tier, you get an exclusive Clenneth coin that only comes with that top tier. So mm -hmm. <laughs> you, really, you really outdid yourself. Like you was not even trying to play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we definitely tried to figure out other ways to do it. So we end up doing some things to like my first Kickstarter. I'm someone that likes to try and give back. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I receive something, I should always try and give something back. So, um, how long? Six days left, or five days now, depending. Because I think oh, after eight o'clock, that's when it drops a day for me. Because I launched oh. at seven thirty, eight o'clock. So I think it's now five days left. So, oh, and for those that do back to Kickstarter, a lot of people don't know this. If they're unfamiliar with Kickstarter, Kickstarter doesn't take the funds out until the end of the campaign, which is March 19th. So whatever you pledge now doesn't come out until March 19th, just a heads up. I know our first Kickstarter, a lot of people got confused and they yeah. didn't know what was happening, so. But, yeah, those that are not familiar with Kickstarter, yes. It, once it's backed, your money, that's when your money <laughs> gets taken out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just keep that in mind. Um, so the first Kickstarter that I did, I had, a bunch of other indie creators 
included in that Kickstarter. Oh, so wow. if you bought my my comic book from the Kickstarter, you got a bunch of other great creators in my oh, book, okay. like their websites, their Instagrams, and et cetera, in those books. This time around, I actually got introduced to someone called Mark Wise, who is uh, the CEO of Comic Book for Kids. Oh, it's an organization that basically... Um, gives out comic books to sick kids in hospital across the country. Oh, okay. So I got word from him, from him because someone had sent him my books for my last Kickstarter. And he sent it out to a few kids. They loved it. So he reached out to me and he told me that, you know, you could include us in your Kickstarter. If mm -hmm. that would help you get more followers, more money, more backers. We just care about getting, you know, books, comic books for the kids. So we talked and we created like three ways you can help support comic book for kids within my Kickstarter. One, oh. if you end up backing it with no tier, like you don't take any rewards, that money goes straight into ordering books to send out to them. Oh, um, then if you do end up liking a tier that you want for yourself, you can always add on an additional book that will also be sent out to those kids. And we also have a CB4K tier alone that is just meant for sending out, you know, more books to those kids. So, okay. you know, that's something I'm very happy we're able to do in this Kickstarter. Yeah, that definitely sounds dope. I like that a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I send, uh, I do the whole toys for tots and send uh, toys to Dominican Republic um, every Christmas. So, and then we've had you know, child comic book creators on the show as well. So mm -hmm. it's always good. Plus the fact that, you know, your um, characters are, you know, of yeah. color. So like that's <laughs> definitely, you know, the representation matters as we've known for many, many years now, representation matters. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, I like that a lot. That, like, I think that's really cool that, that you're, supporting this this organization as well um so if people want we put the link for the kickstarter um already in chat guys so go ahead and click that link you guys have five days left to get this tell them where they can follow you your website tell them everything jerry you can i have a website at www.e4comics.com i am on instagram facebook twitter TikTok. I'm still <laughs> learning Twitter and TikTok. Those are platforms that it's just <laughs> confusing. Like it, it's too much of me being like, especially TikTok's too much of me being out yeah. there. Yeah. Like you really gotta make time for those things. Mm -hmm. But they're all under E4 comics. Perfect. You can find me anywhere on the E4 comics. Perfect. <laughs> well, we've come to the end of our show, sadly. Sadly. <laughs> 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 But guys, remember, you only have five days left. The link is in the chat. The link will be in the description. Please, please, please go support this comic. It is so good, so well written. And as you saw, the art is phenomenal as well. I will be back, shockingly, again, Wednesday this time. <laughs> <laughs> with another guest thank you everybody for stopping by and tuning in super excited to have a big shout out to our wonderful guest jerry see you guys next wednesday bye everybody bye or this wednesday not next wednesday this wednesday <laughs> <laughs>